Welcome back, Survivalist. So in my opinion, there's certain skills that every man should learn in order to protect himself and his family during emergency situations. So situations like your car breaking down an isolated road, or a medical emergency, or simply surviving the aftermath behind a major storm or hurricane. So today I'm gonna to run through the 10 survival skills that every man should know. The first survival skill that you should know is how to start a fire. Fire can provide you with warmth and light during cold nights, can cook food for you, purify water, and even provide some psychological benefits during a bad situation. And the truth is that you gave the average person a book of matches or a lighter, even in the best case scenario, a lot of people could not get a fire started. And that's where you need to start. Even in the best case scenario, can you get a fire going? Do you know the difference between tinder and kindling? Do you know how to layer the sticks so that it allows oxygen to flow into your fire and keep it sustaining? So that is where you need to start. It's just the best case scenario. Can you build a sustainable fire? And after you get comfortable with that, then you can move on to more creative fire starting techniques like using a ferro rod or a Fresno lens. After that, you can move on to how to create your own fire starter. So maybe by using char cloth or how to find and process fat wood. Now, after you master that, then you can move on to trading a fire using something like a bow drill. Now, bow drills are very hard to actually create. And a lot of times, even people feel very comfortable using them they often still struggle to get a fire going with that. And that's why I recommend bow drills are the last fire starting skill that you master. But really start off with how to build a campfire, how to use Fresno lenses and ferro rods, how to create fire starters, and then something like a friction fire or bow drill. And that's kind of the last step in your fire starting skill progression. The next survival skill you need to learn is how to build a shelter. Now instinctively, you're probably thinking about wilderness shelters, but the truth is a lot of those principles that apply to a wilderness shelter also apply to many other situations, whether you're trapped in a car or even if you're trapped in your own home during a winter blackout. Now the first shelter I recommend that you start learning is how to build a tarp shelter. Go out to the woods with a tarp and some cordage to use as a ridge line. There's a couple of different configurations that you can experiment with. Now there's gonna be a couple of lessons that you're gonna learn while you're experimenting and learning how to create a tarp shelter. One of the lessons is that you don't wanna make your shelter too big. This is a very common mistake for beginners. If you made the tarp shelter big enough to fit six people in there, but it's only you in there, that's more space that your body has to heat up. Instead, if you create that shelter much, much smaller, that's less space your body heat is going to have to heat up. You'll be able to stay much, much warmer. Another lesson that you're gonna learn is that you're actually gonna lose majority of your heat to the ground beneath you. And even in a tarp shelter, you need to have some sort of insulating barrier underneath you that you sleep on. Whether that's leaves, pine needles, branches, whatever it is, you don't wanna be sleeping on the dirt. And those two principles that you're gonna learn in this exercise absolutely apply to if you're, even if you're sheltering in your home. Now, after you feel comfortable creating tarp shelters, then you can move on to something like a debris hut, which is just a small shelter meant for one person with all natural materials. So leaves, pine needles, and branches to create that shelter. After you learn that, then you can move on to more advanced shelters, maybe like a lean-to. And when you do that, you're gonna quickly learn that creating a lean-to is a lot of work and it's gonna take you a long time, probably most of the day to create a good lean-to structure. And I think that having these experiences of actually building and sleeping in these shelters is gonna be very important for you. The average person, if I told them go out in the woods and build a shelter and you have four hours until it gets dark, a lot of people are gonna start off trying to build some sort of a lean-to structure. They're gonna make it way too big. They're gonna spend way too much time building that structure and they're probably not going to properly insulate it. So by having these experiences, you're gonna to know to create it much smaller, a debris hut would probably be a better structure to build, and you're going to insulate it very heavily with leaves and pine needles. The next survival skill that you need to learn is how to purify water. And this skill is actually applicable in many, many situations. 
from your car breaking down in the middle of nowhere to you and your family surviving the aftermath behind a hurricane and you don't have running water in your home anymore to maybe you're out hiking and you underestimated how much water you should have brought. And the first step in the skill I would say is just how to actually use camping filters and how to boil water out in the wild. In most situations, if you have those options, that is going to be the first step that you take. Now, after you feel comfortable with that, then you can move on to using water purification tablets additives, and even bleach to purify water. And again, I just want you to have those experiences under your belt. After you feel comfortable with those sources of water purification, then you can move on to creating your own water filter. You can do this with plastic bottles and natural materials like sand and grass, your t-shirt, and you can use charcoal, any number of materials to create a filter for the water. And you need to understand that filtering water is not the same as purifying water. You need to first filter the water to remove any debris and kind of clean the water up a bit. And then you can purify it with the tablets, the bleach, or by boiling the water and to make it drinkable. The next survival skill you should know is basic first aid. It's actually a skill that I think that everybody should know. You never know when you're gonna come across somebody choking at a restaurant or you're the first to arrive on a car accident. Both these situations, your actions could be the difference between life and death for somebody else. But this is a skill that is so important. I actually don't think that you should just learn this from YouTube videos. You should go get some hands-on experiences and actually learn this from an in-person course. A lot of times fire departments will actually host in-person training for basic first aid and CPR. You should learn basic things like how to give the Heimlich maneuver or how to create a splint if somebody breaks a bone and learn the difference between arterial bleeding and bleeding from your veins. One of my biggest pet peeves is when people overemphasize tourniquets. And tourniquets are meant for if you have arterial bleeding, which is bright red and pulsing bleeding, you need to put a tourniquet on so somebody does not bleed to death. But tourniquets can be very dangerous and are not always necessary. The problem with tourniquets is if you put a tourniquet on somebody's arm because they have a cut on their forearm, if you do not remove that tourniquet in a few hours, they will have to amputate the entire arm because that arm will be dead. And there are many situations where you don't need a tourniquet. All you need is a basic bandage on somebody's wound. Um, and there are absolutely situations of people losing entire limbs when they did not need to. And I think that oftentimes in these prepping communities, there's a lot of emphasis on how to create a tourniquet and not as much emphasis on when you should and should not be using a tourniquet. And this is the type of first aid knowledge that you need to know and have some experience with. So once again, I don't recommend that you learn first aid from YouTube. Go to your local fire department, look around and take a in-person first aid course where you can get some hands-on experience with these things. The next survival skill you should learn is how to catch wild game and fish. I think that most people are overconfident in their ability to catch wild game and fish and underestimate just how hard it actually is. And one of the first things I recommend you learn how to do is build a basic fish trap. There are actually many different designs that you can create using just sticks in the mud in order to create a funnel that the fish can swim into but have trouble swimming out of. After that, I recommend that you learn how to create snares using metal wires, and then you can progress on to creating more elaborate traps like a spring snare or a figure four deadfall. And you need to understand that even if you know how to create fish traps and figure four deadfalls and spring snares, it is still very difficult to catch wild game using these methods. So by having this experience under your belt, you're not going to overestimate your ability and your skill in catching wild game. The next survival skill that you should know is basic electrical skills. So basic skills like how to jumpstart your car, how to replace a fuse in your car, how to wire an electrical outlet or a switch, how to reset your circuit breakers, how to replace a circuit breaker in your electrical panel. All these basic, basic electrical skills can absolutely come in handy and help you out in many, many different situations. The next survival skill that you should know is how to process wild game. So now that you know how to actually catch that wild game, you need to know how, how to actually gut that squirrel, gut that fish, and how to cook that meat. And there are some animals like deer, for example, that you have to be careful when you gut them. If you puncture an organ or the stomach, it can spill fluids out that can taint the meat. And again, if you gave the average person a fish and a campfire and told them to cook it, 
They just wouldn't know where to start. You need to have that experience under your belt now so when it is a matter of life and death, you have some familiarity with what steps to take. The next survival skill you should learn is basic knot tying. And again, this is one of those skills that you're gonna find yourself using very often. From tying tarps down for shelters, to fishing, to backpacking, camping, there are just numerous situations where you need to know how to tie some basic knots. Now there's probably hundreds of knots out there that you can learn, it can be a little overwhelming, but I would say that there's really only four categories of knots that you need to learn at least one knot in each of these categories, and that will cover you in probably 90% of the situations. For example, you should learn how to create a loop at the end of a rope. For this, I like just going with the Bolin knot. This is one of the most basic knots, one of the first knots that you learn in the Boy Scouts. You should also learn how to create a loop in the middle of a rope. For example, you could use the Alpine butterfly loop in order to do this, or sometimes I'll just take the cordage and put a bite in it, and then just do an overhand knot with that bite, and that'll create a loop in the middle of a rope. You should also know how to tie two pieces of rope together. So for this, you could do something like the figure eight bend to tie those cords together, or even just a basic square knot will be able to tie two cords together. You should also learn how to create a tightening knot, so a knot that can slide up and down a rope and tighten up against something. So for this, I often use the taut line hitch or the trucker's hitch, and this knot is great for attaching a tarp to a tree. And really, I'd say those are kind of the four categories of knots that I most often use. You should learn at least one knot in each of those four categories. The next skill that you should learn is navigation. So again, if I gave you a map and a compass and I said, I need you to navigate five miles that way, could you do it? You know, a lot of people could not. So that's really where I'd recommend you start is how to use a map, a topographical map and a compass. After that, then you can get familiar with how to navigate without a map and without a compass. So how to find the North Star. You should have a rough idea of what direction your sun rises and sets in your area at that time of the year. There's also tricks that you can use like ranger beads to measure how far you've walked. And essentially you figure out how many steps it takes you to walk, let's say a hundred yards. Let's say it takes you 150 steps. So then in your head you count and every 150 steps you move a bead from one side of this cord to the next and to kind of roughly keep track of how long that you've walked. You can also use um, tricks like focusing on one object in the distance for you to walk to. That'll help you stay in a straight line when you're walking. Without using a trick like that, people often find themselves just kind of veering all over the place in what direction that they're walking. So basic navigation and basic navigation skills is something that you should get familiar with as well. The next skill that you should learn is how to create your own cordage. Cordage is incredibly important in many different survival situations from how to build a shelter to how to apply a tourniquet or bandage and basic first aid. The first thing that I recommend that you get familiar with is how to use small roots and vines as cordage. If you're building a shelter and you have two sticks you need to tie together and there's not gonna be a lot of weight on them, some roots or some vines would suffice in order to tie those together. Next, get familiar with learning how to use strips of cloth or leather as cordage to create knots and tie wood together with those. If you really need some cordage, especially for first aid, and if you've got a knife, you can get a lot of cordage by cutting up your shirt. You can also learn tricks to create cordage out of plastic bottles and your knife. And let's face it, no matter where you go in the world, you're gonna find a plastic bottle nearby. And finally, after you master those other cordage techniques, you can learn how to weave together your own cordage using the inner bark of trees or natural grass. So now that you know what skills that you should be learning and working towards, check out this video I did right here where I break down the 10 items that every man should carry on him daily. Don't forget to subscribe for more prepping and survival videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next video.